Welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. We're going to be talking about how to effectively practice arpeggios, which I like calling core tones, and we'll get that out in a couple seconds. But I want to mention two things. Number one, my student Mike brought this to me several weeks ago, uh, a lesson idea, and uh, we worked on it, and I thought it was really, really valuable, so I want to present it to all the Stitch Method fans out there. Number two, before we get going, as you probably know, I have a workshop coming up really soon, and I just want to mention one of my sponsors, Ernie Ball. Don't roll your eyes. I am telling you, Ernie Ball is fantastic. They are such a giving company, uh, and they, they give a lot to this workshop. And the reason they do is because they really know that their uh, their stuff is really good, and, and it works for the working musician. And you know, once they get out there, they know people are going to like it. So I just want to say, if you are in the market for any sort of guitar accessories that Ernie Ball makes, check out Ernie Ball first. Uh, their cables, I know, are exceptional. Tuners, picks picks, right? Uh, they're great. So I just want to say thank you to Ernie Ball and enough of that commercial. I know, but it's true. Thank you, Ernie Ball. Go check them out. All right. Now, how do we practice chord tones slash arpeggios? Well, let me tell you my beef first with the word arpeggio, and this might help you understand the lesson. Now, arpeggios, triads, chord tones, pretty much all the same thing, uh, say, they're all saying the same thing, but I think that chord tone hits the heaviest, and I want to explain this. An arpeggio, piece of a chord. Triads, how chords are built. Chord tones, pieces of a chord. And so, when I think about these terms, I think about triad and arpeggio kind of like uh, if you go to a grocery store and you buy a carrot or you buy some chicken or steak or you take a box of crackers off the shelf, um, you, you know what you're getting, all right? And in my mind, that's the word arpeggio or triad, but chord tone is kind of like the farmers. Um, they're attached to the process in which this stuff was made. The farmer who grew the carrots, who grew the livestock, or, you know, uh, yeah, grew the livestock, or grew the flour to make the crackers, they are more attached to the product. When, when they go to the store and they actually pick up a carrot or a box or a piece of chicken or whatever, they kind of like can chuckle because they know the, exact, the entire process from, you know, point zero to the final product. And so a chord tone, in my mind, tethers a, a musician much, much better to the music that's happening at the moment because you're realizing in a chord tone you are playing a piece of the chord that is happening. And that is how we, we need to practice this effectively. If you're practicing arpeggios or triads just as exercises and you're not attaching uh, to the music at hand, you're not uh, you know really feeling the moment or paying attention to the moment, um, then it's harder to make music, and this is all about making music. So we're going to use the word chord tones as much as possible. I'm not dismissing the word arpeggio. I'm not dismissing the word triad. It's just I favor the word chord tone a lot more. So with that being said, I don't know how many minutes in we are, let's get down to it. We're going to practice playing music with chord tones and arpeggio so that you can see them better. That's a big question I get a lot. How do I see my chord tones? How do I see them better when I'm soloing? Well, to do that, you got to practice effectively, and to practice effectively, effectively, you just have to focus purely on your chord tones. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to focus on a 12-bar blues, a major 12-bar blues, just with E, A, and B right now. Now, this is going to sound a little bit folky, bluesy, folky, rocky, you know, if you're a Fish fan, kind of like Possum, if you like Jerry Garcia, kind of like their happy blues stuff. Um, and country-ish. So let me give you a quick little demo of just, now is it gonna sound amazing? No, we'll work on getting it to sound as best as possible. Let, give me, let me give you a quick demo of what we're going for. This is just arpeggio work. <laughs> That's not the end result. 
But you can hear very quickly how attached I was to the moment. It, again, I use the term Kit Kat, you know, like if there's an E chord being played, there's an E chord, then you can break off the pieces of the E chord and feed them to the audience. And that's what you're going to be doing. Now, we're going to be breaking out a little bit of this, but we want to practice efficiently. All right, so the first chord in my, in my blues is an E major. So let's find that E major. I'm going to, uh, you probably saw, we're going to be working around the ninth fret area. All right, so there's a G uh, shaped, G shaped cage chord right here for the E chord. Ninth fret bar, 12th fret with a pinky, or you can bar the 12th fret on the, of the pinky uh, with the pinky on the uh, B string as well. So you can have the single, double. You also have the thicker end, 12, 11, 9, 9, 9. So any which one that you like is fine. But let's dive in further. What is the chord tone arpeggio? Try it. I get it. Um, the building blocks of this chord are all there, and you want to play this more like a scale than you do a chord. You can play 12, I just spit, 12, 11, 9, 9, 9, 12, 12. These are your chord tones. So pause this video and see if you can see that. 12, 11, 9, 9, 9, 12, 12. Those are the arpeggio chord tones that I can find in this moment tethered, right, in this moment right there. So I'm going to play that back and track. I'm just going to play these arpeggios. There it is. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to sound amazing just yet, but you can hear that you're, you're on your way. Okay, so that those are your E chord tones. Now, we're going to go to our A chord tones really quickly. Again, pause this video if you need to and, and write this stuff out. No pressure. All right. Um, we're going to expand the ideas, but let's get the map going. My A chord is my C-shaped chord right in that ninth fret, right here, okay? C-shaped cage chord. Um, I'll link some cage chord videos below in case you haven't seen it. Um, this is my 12th fret of the A, 11th fret D, 9th fret G, 10th fret of the B, and 9th fret of the high E. I think I said that right. And there's a bonus arpeggio. Let me show you. So you're going to go 12, 11, 9, 10, 9, and then 12. There's a bonus chord tone. I keep on saying arpeggio. So you want to practice like that. You don't want to practice this. Nope. Okay, we're, we're, we're trying to incorporate our notes into our solo. So you got to treat them more like scales of your fingers. Look at the fingers I'm using and try to do it. Pinky, ring, index, middle, index, pinky. Oh. All right. Now, really quickly, you're going to watch for that. I'm just going to show you my B chord, lasso this chord, lasso it, and just drag it up two frets, and there it is. That's my B chord I'm, I'm going to use, okay? It's 14, 13, 11, 12, 11, 14. Same exact motion for the A as it is for the B. Okay? And so now, I'm going to just, just use your arpeggios, part of... of Practicing effectively is to actually practice what you want to do. And you want to practice putting chord tones in, so you're just going to practice just your chord tones. Here we go. Oop. There, sorry. All right. Does this sound amazing? No, it sounds kind of choppy and all stuff, but you can hear that we're bonding with the music. So now, focusing on just your chord tones like that with the 12 bar blues, all you gotta do is type in on YouTube to practice E major 12 bar blues, and you'll find the track and you sit and you can just do this. You should know 12 bar blues by now. If you don't, go watch my channel somewhere that's all over the place. All right. And so the idea here is you're just focusing on your chord tones, but there's more that you can do now to start saying something. Um, I might mention this a little bit earlier, but sliding into your chord tones, sliding in from one fret or two frets, it doesn't matter. You're not looking for this. You're looking for these ghost slides that come out of nowhere that just end into your note. All right. And so let's see what it sounds like when I can pick after I after you've really understood where these chord tones are. 
you can try to start sliding in. Now, sliding in on different notes is really cool, quite effective. Some of my favorite guitar players do it. Um, let's see if we can just add a little bit of flair with some slide. Now I'm, I'm forcing it for the moment for you for YouTube, but you want to sit and practice this stuff. There's my looper. Okay, um, and so sliding in. Now we're just soloing with chord tones to help you focus on getting two chord tones. That's the whole mission of this, of, of this video. Now one thing that you want to try doing is is this. Now we're we're dropping a little bit of theory on you is maybe knowing your intervals. What intervals are you playing? Okay, we'll take a look at this E chord. You have a one, three, five. One, three, five, one. The first thing you want to try doing is finding your threes. This is cool stuff, okay? One, three. Eleventh fret of the A. One, three. Ninth fret of the B. Well, if that's a three, then coming back one fret is a flat three. And you're still using your chord tones, but you can always find your three and slide in to a major third. And that's why I had you kind of slide first, okay? So one thing you want to do is play some chord tones and then slide into the major thirds, but we have a 12 bar blues to do, so let's try on the A's. Okay, here's my one, here's my three. All right, one, three, so that means my minor third's here. One, three, five, one, three. That's a three. One fret back. All right, same thing for the B chord. One, three, minor third. There's my other third. All right. So I know this is moving fast, but again, you have a rewind button and you can slow down the video, all right? And a pause button. So here we go. Listen for those. I'm targeting the major thirds. I know those are chord tones, but I'm gonna like cock back and load it and kind of get into that uh, note with a little bit of minor thirdness. Here we go. Welcome back. I'm not gonna lie to you. I hit the A chord when I started and it sounded terrible. So I should hit the E chord when it starts. Here we go, starting on the E. So, sliding, you're, you're targeting your thirds, just to let you know, okay? This is still a chord tone series. You're targeting your thirds, and you're just coming in from one fret back. Another dance that you can do is your flat five, five dance. If you know where your fives are, all right? One, three, five, flat five. All right? If you know where your other five is, one, three, five. Oh, flat five. One fret behind it. If you know your A chord and you know where your fives are, one, three, five. One, three, five. There it is there. Same thing for that B chord. One, three, five. One, three, five. Now, I know I'm moving fast, but you want to just take a half hour and do the chord tones. Then you want to try taking some time to do some slides. Then you want to introduce the major third just in the E chord and understand how it works. Then get to the A and get to the B but I don't have a one and a half hour lesson, okay? So, here we go. I'm gonna try and blend and slide in some, uh, some fives and flat fives, like from the flat five, threes from the flat three, and the ones, and, the, and there's the root notes, but I'm using, I'm targeting just chord tones, that's the thing. How do you incorporate more chord tones into your, into your playing? You focus on them, you look at them, you use them for navigation, here we go. Here, okay, nice. A lot more color. Now, 
what did we just learn? I don't know. I'm kidding. We learned that if you focus on the chord tones, the arpeggios, okay, that you can play them at the moment of the chord and be tethered to it. You are, you are conscious of the chord that's playing. You're also trying to emphasize the chord tones that the audience is hearing from either your organ player or the bass player or your other guitar player. You're, you're emphasizing them as your lead guitar player. Then we are, again, sliding into your chord tones. Very, very, you know, um, effective just to break up the monotony of... <laughs> Use your ears and dance around. It's always going to work. You got to trust your ears. Then start sliding with major thirds as practice. So, sorry, sliding with the minor third to the major third as a practice. And once you nail that down, start sliding in from the five uh, into the five from the flat five. Now, all this has been chord tone centric, and you can hear that it's developing the sound that you probably want to get in order to feel colorful and attached to the music. Now one thing I will say is that is the exercise I would give you to focus on the chord tones. But if I was really playing this, I would be loading up with my E major pentatonic. And it's the last thing I want you to do now. Now we've broken out of chord tones. You, you focus so much on chord tones. You have this E major pentatonic on this ninth fret. 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9 12, 9, 12. Let the conspiracy theorists start commenting. All right, there it is there. And the idea here is you can use this now to kind of like run around, but you still want to focus on your chord tones. And when you get to the five chord and you get to the four chord, you still kind of just want to break away on those chord tones. But for the E, you can use your E major pentatonic as a thread to get to your arpeggios instead of being just now. You can kind of dance there with your pentatonic. So my last final performance uh, for the night will be just me playing your, my E major pentatonic, focusing on those E chord tones when the E is happening. And when the A and when the B happen, I'm just going to break out and do my um, chord tone arpeggio uh, soloing with those two chords. Here we go. Let's see how we do. thing, and I don't know how long this video is, one last thing, you know, on that, on the C-shaped chords, if you look, you have, you have this, like, this little D-shaped chord, and sliding in, and then sliding again, or for the B chord, so I'm sliding in on the G string, hitting the B note, coming back, sliding again, then hitting the E note. Let's see if I can do one last performance and fade out. Practice your core tones by practicing your core tones. That's the whole like part of part of this a point of this lesson to practice your core tones and see them. You got to practice them, and that's it. And hopefully, we found a way that makes it enjoyable for you. Maybe you're getting sound that you like. If not, I do apologize. But try this in this order. Go slow. Watch it. You can do it. I promise. And I'm gonna fade out with the solo. But look for on the A's like that. <laughs> kind of stuff. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 